fibre channel so that it uses fibre channel loops. So you can see there we've got loop A, mm -hmm. loop pair two and loop pair one at the top and bottom. So there's, there's um, multiple paths, in theory no single point of failure, multiple yep. controllers, paths can foul, controllers can foul. You've got that resilience as well. As I would say, if you're going to put all your eggs in one basket, which is a bit of the thing that you were kind yeah. of wary of, you need to make sure you've bought a good basket to yeah. start with. <laughs> okay, so we've got all our hardware, we've got our shelves, we've got our discs, and then basically if we work from the top, sort of bottom up, we basically take all our discs and then we've, we've put them together in a group. So we've got here 66 discs that we've put in a group, and we've called that group FC for Fibre Channel Online. So that's our online Fibre Channel group, 66 discs. And you can see that adds up to uh, what's that, eight terabytes, mm -hmm. eight and a half terabytes. And on this particular model, the largest size um, disk that we can create are two terabytes. So this doesn't support disks, this particular model, larger than two terabytes. So that, that's um, you know, quite a large uh, uh, yeah. space anyway. <laughs> The other things on this particular model is, uh, is is a protection level. So this is a bit like a hot spare. So this is a reserved capacity that that uh, will be reserved on that disc group should a disc foul. So always make sure there's enough capacity there for sure. one or two discs. So we've got our disc group. And then moving up, we say, okay, we've, we've got our hardware, we've got our disc group. What we need to do now is actually connect a, a server to the SAM. So we know that behind the scenes we've plugged all the cables in. Yep. So um, we've got our fibre channel cables plugged in. So we need to say to uh, we we need the the sound to know how do I recognise a server that's coming in, and um, how am I going to know which server's what? So if I go to the 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 host section, you can see that. I've created a folder just just for just us for us, today. Yeah. Yep, and we are going to um, add a host to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a host, and I'm going to add it as a fibre channel host, uh -huh. and I'm going to add it as an iSCSI host. And what we'll do, we'll add this host in um, for this part of the demo to show it working, and then afterwards, I'm going to let you have a go, and you can add in your. Hyper V virtual machine. Go on, I've got to pay attention now. <laughs> Go on then. Okay, so how does the SAN know what, what the uh, the server is that's connecting to it? Um, various, machines have various ways of being identified. Um, machines have IP addresses, but down at the hardware level, uh, machines have um, on network cards MAC addresses. Mm -hmm. MAC addresses, as you know, are burned in, unique to every network card. And when you're talking in Fibre Channel, they have a burned in address on those as well, but it's not called a MAC address, it's called a worldwide name. So basically, the, the SAN, when you're dealing with Fibre Channel, wants to know what is the worldwide name of the server that we're dealing with. So on this particular one, um, you can either make a note of the name when you plug in the fibre channel card into the server, they normally have it written on. You uh -huh. Good idea to write them down. But if you've plugged it in like we have and forgot to write it down, you can normally uh, use a utility that comes with the card. So I know these have got QLogic um, fibre channel cards in there. Okay. Typically, you can use QLogic or MLX is really the main two manufacturers. Same as I've seen, yeah. So you might see MLX. So I'm going to load up this piece of software and this should query the local machine. Okay, there we go. So we can see this is my server, and I've got two fibre channel cards in there. So the, the address we're interested in is the port address there. Can you see the yep. address? Um, that's a very, very similar to the MAC address yeah. on, on, on a network card. So you can see that one ends in 4672. And if we look at the other one, you'll probably find it ends in 4673. So that's the, the piece of information that we are going to need to enter onto the SAN. So if I go back to the SAN, and I would say, OK, let's, let's add a host. I want to give this one a name, so we can call this uh, IT Idiots. 
Um, server number one, there we go. So this is just a generic name, doesn't have to match the server name. And it's asking us what type of host we're connecting. So we're going to connect this at fibre channel. Now you can see below, it's now saying, what is the worldwide name? Mm -hmm. Now you've got an option there, you can actually cut and paste the name in uh, from that window, or these, the SAN itself will actually scan the, the network, the storage area network, and say, actually, I can see these worldwide names on the network that have not been allocated okay. to anything. So lo and behold, you can see uh, the, the worldwide name of the fiber channel card on the server. So we can select that. So presumably this SAN's connected to a fiber switch and all these servers are connected to that fiber switch. That's correct. And that was saying these yeah. two machines on that fiber switch are not associated. That's correct, cool. yes, yes. Well, not associated with anything on this SAN. They could be associated with something else on another SAN, but not on this SAN. Right. So we're looking at it from this storage um, Okay, yeah, I've got you. Yeah, you could have multiple SANs on the switch. Yeah, so we've got three SANs on the switch, but on this particular one, it's, it's not been defined. Gotcha. Yeah. So we're going to say, okay, this our server's called IT Idiot server number one, and that is the worldwide name of the fiber channel card in the server, which we confirmed from the uh, QLogic software. So we can say add host. So now we have our server with a, a more meaningful name that, that you and I can relate to. Mm -hmm. And if we click on ports, we can see it's got a fiber channel card of that address. Now we know there's two fiber channel cards in there, so we can say add a port. Yep. And again, we go enter manually or drop down list number 73. We can say add a port, and lo and behold, we've now got both cards. Now, if there was four cards, we can say add a port, add a port. Gotcha, yep. So now, whenever we are referencing our server name, IT Idiot Server 1, the SAM knows that it's dealing with these underlying hardware addresses. So you and I can deal with a nice user-friendly name, but the SAM will deal with the, the underlying name. So that's our server uh, defined. So again, just so everyone's clear on that, because I'm not 100% clear on that. So we define that twice. That's that's showing us that the server we're presenting the storage to has got two network cards. That's it, got two fiber cards in, that's and correct. that's the worldwide of each one. That's correct. Cool. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. So we'll we'll do this first, mm -hmm. and then we'll do the iSCSI yep. afterwards. Okay. So we've got our server. We now need to create a disk. Uh, create the folder for our IT idiot. So okay, let's let's create a disk. So on this particular SAN, disks are called virtual disks. Everybody has different names. Sure. Uh, you've seen a few yourselves, and sometimes the names get confused in between manufacturers. Yeah. And, um, and it's just a case of getting used to the terminology that they all use. Uh, and some manufacturers, uh, you'll see here when we when we create this disk, um, it's going to ask me for a disk name. So I, I put. FC disk one and what size do we want it to be? So Ten gigabits, ten gigabytes. So <laughs> bits, bits is always in uh, comms, bytes is always on storage. So it's gigabytes. Uh, you know, this this also shows what we're talking about before, where disk capacities are so large that you may only want a small amount of disk. Where you know, a, a traditional disk would be a lot of waste. Hey, exactly, yeah. Here That's we're so. just saying, well, actually, we only need ten gigabytes. So it's asking me which disk group do I want to select the storage from. Now we've only got one disk group here, the FC Online, but if you have multiple disk groups, you could select which disk group that you wanted to use. And then it's asking us which RAID level do we want to use. Now I know when we spoke earlier on, you, was, you said some manufacturers you've seen put the RAID level on the group. Yeah. And then when you create the disks, you actually don't specify the RAID level because it's actually on the group itself. And that's correct, there are some manufacturers that work that way. So you define your group and you say the group will be RAID 5 or RAID 1 or RAID 10 or RAID 50 or RAID 6. It's another and episode. <laughs> we can have an episode on RAID, RAID levels yeah. <laughs> and the different interpretation that, that different manufacturers have. This particular one calls them V-RAID. There, there is, I don't believe, any definition of a V-RAID. You know, RAID 5 exists and RAID 1 exists. Now, because it's kind of imitating RAID 5 or imitating RAID 1, uh, this particular one from HP, they, they've called it V-RAID. So RAID 5, um, uh, uh, most people will know, is, um, is, is a strike parity 